Well, what's up again guys, Brian here at 3TR and I just got finished watching the Microsoft E3 2015 press conference and I have to say that as an overall conference compared to last year's or probably the last couple of years that they've had at E3, this was a very good conference. I'm not going to say it was great. They didn't really throw anything at me that I was super excited for, but they did happen to throw a lot of really cool ideas. They did happen to announce a couple of ex a few exclusives that I do have some interest in, um, and definitely some ideas and some new tech that might make gaming a little bit more interesting. I'm not going to say it's going to completely revolutionize how we play games, I think it might be an interesting experiment which you know most of us get our hands on this new technology. So starting off, the press conference started up with Halo 5 Guardians, you know, as we expected. Uh, something I also I really liked about this from what I saw with the new gameplay is it's going to be squad based. So it's going to resemble something like Reach, which I have not had a chance to play yet. Uh, I did get the Master Chief Collection with my Xbox uh, and I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, I'm actually, I, I think Halo 4 was pretty... Uh, Crazy, had a lot of fun with that game. And I like how apparently you're going to be playing as both Master Chief and Spartan Lox Squadron. So this is definitely going to be the type of game I would certainly like to play with a couple of my friends uh, if I can get some more on Xbox Live. Because uh, as much as some people, I'm not really big on competitive gaming, but I am really big on co-op gaming. So the fact that I can play with you guys is, you know, that that's already got me sold. I already have my copy of, uh, of Halo uh, Guardian pre-ordered, so that's out of the way. Uh, the next thing they announced is a new uh, Xbox exclusive called ReCore, and it was basically just one long cutscene. It looks like it took took place in a post-apocalyptic setting, uh, and you're following this girl and this little robotic dog around. Uh, and this is just me, but did that girl kind of remind you, any of you guys like of, of Ellie from The Last of Us? I don't know. I was getting somewhat of an Ellie vibe from her, and she's just like look, she's messing with this robot and. All of a sudden, she's attacked by a bunch of these really evil robots, and then her little robot dog like tries to fight him off, and then he kind of explodes. And then basically, what she does, she kind of takes this dog's core and just puts it in another robot. And then uh, I, I think I think that's pretty cool. So it looks like it's gonna be like the type of game where you'll be able to like take this little core thing and install it to a bunch of different robots to come aid you in battle. So that definitely seems like an exclusive title that I'm really interested, in and I can't wait to see more of. Uh, then I think one of the bigger announcements that they had for the conference was they announced Xbox One backwards compatibility. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be using this per se because I don't currently own any Xbox 360 games. However, there are probably one or two games that did come out for the 360 library that I wouldn't mind playing. Uh, I know that this is a really, really big thing for a lot of them, Microsoft and Xbox fans. Uh, so I'm happy to you for forgetting that. Um... Uh, but yeah, I, I do think this was definitely a good, uh, a great step in the right direction for Microsoft. And then they announced uh, a new controller. Uh, they're calling it the Xbox Elite controller, and basically it's your standard uh, Xbox One controller. However, it has it's it's customizable. It comes with a lot of parts. Uh, apparently, you can like change the type of joysticks you have. You can change the analogs button section you can I think there was something that said you might change the triggers there's even a couple of things that are hitting on the back so I think that's I think that's pretty cool I'm not sure if I'll be getting one because I already have plans on kind of creating my own 3TR style customized controller for my Xbox one so I'm not sure if I will be getting an elite controller but I don't think that's a that's a very good great great idea uh, after that they announced they talked more about Fallout 4 um I'm not going to be getting Fallout 4. I'm not a Fallout fan, so Fallout wasn't really important to me for the conference. Uh, and then EA announced uh, some type of service that might have been going around for a while, which is called EA Access, which pretty much allows you to play a lot of their library of games, and they announced that you'll be able to play some of their titles earlier before the official releases. Uh, this isn't really something I'll be using very often. I like hard copies. I don't like downloading games only. I think that sucks, just, just my opinion. And then after that, they announced Forza Motorsport 6. Again, another kind of franchise I'm not really a big fan of, so I won't be playing that. Uh, they also announced Dark Souls 3. Again, uh, I didn't really have a lot of fun with Bloodborne, so you know, Dark Souls, I won't be getting that either. Uh, they showed some more footage of The Division, which, uh, you know, I was already pumped up for The Division at first, so just to see more footage, you know, it's 
really nice. I'll be getting that for obviously for the PlayStation 4, but that still looks very, very entertaining. And then finally, we got to see some gameplay of Rise of the Tomb Raider, although it was it it pretty much was just a gameplay version of all the the cinematic cutscene trailers that we've seen for it. Where basically it's just Laura and one of her friends, and they're just climbing up this icy mountain. And, you know, stuff goes crazy, and avalanche happens, and then the, the mountain that she's walking on starts to crumble, and then they kind of show just some, you know, moments throughout the game that are going to happen. Is it just me, or does this seem very, very similar to Uncharted 2? Because with Uncharted 1, we spent a lot of time in the forest, and then with Uncharted 2, we the whole theme was in the icy mountain, so I can't help but get the feeling that... I don't want to say they're ripping Uncharted off, because I don't think they should be doing that at all, because they're doing fine just on their own. But uh, I, I can't help but notice the similarities. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just me. After that, they announced that Oculus Rift and Xbox have a new partnership, and so uh, at launch with Oculus Rift, they're going to have them. Um, every, every, I think every Oculus is going to come with an Xbox One uh, controller. So, you know, apparently, I think since... Sony has Morpheus, you know, it only made sense that uh, Microsoft got a partnership with Oculus, so that made sense. However, the new set of tech that they announced, which it looks very interesting, and that's called the Microsoft HoloLens, and basically it's kind of like a headset that allows you to kind of see a screen on whatever wall you're playing on, and you can also play it across multiple devices. Uh, this is definitely something I really wish I was there to kind of test myself, because until I actually get my hands on technology, I can't really make a definitive opinion on something, but if this thing works, it really could really be a serious game changer in terms of how we play games. I'm not saying I'm going to abandon my old school style of playing games, but this certainly would be very, very innovating. And let's see, after that, they announced the Gears of War Ultimate Edition, which apparently all it is, is it's just an updated version of the first Gears. And I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed about this. I really would, would wish that they just did what they did with um, Halo and just do the whole package and give us the first uh, four games of Gears. I, I mean, if, if they could do that with Halo, to, just to help other people kind of catch up with the franchise, I think this would be a smart thing to do. So the fact that they're apparently only focusing on one. This might change over time, but uh, you know, I'll definitely be getting it. Uh, I certainly want to try out Gears for the first time, but I kind of wish I had a chance to play all the other games. But heck, with backwards compatibility, I might be able to do that. And then the last big announcement of the night was they announced a Gears of War 4. I wasn't surprised. Uh, I mean, if they just if Halo 5 is right around the corner, you can expect another Gears coming out right behind it. So I wasn't really surprised. So overall, it was a good press conference. They didn't really throw anything that I'm sure most people wouldn't have expected or seen coming. Uh, but I do think that Microsoft has gotten their game together and they're definitely taking their direction with how they're going to handle their cost systems in the right direction. And if they can keep up this momentum, then this will definitely be a serious contender for uh, Sony's PlayStation. So those are just my initial thoughts on the press conference. I really like to hear your guys' thoughts. What did you like the most? Was there something you were expecting to hear that they didn't announce or you hope to see like maybe in another E3 convention maybe next year? Share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. And if you like this video, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe check me my future videos. And rest assured, I will be reviewing the Sony press conference. I'll try to have that video up later today. So like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>